welcome to Little Creek Pea Ranch. It's like a golf course. I mean, like quiet. <clears throat> Shh, he's putting on the ninth green. He did a good chip coming in. Now he's got to lay up for par. Whatever. <laughs> he's, uh, look at this. Back at the catch box nursery. Oh, I'm interested in this double medium. We're going to spend a little bit more time down here because there's more lessons to learn. I'll teach you more about porch behavior. It's nice out. Date and time. April 24th, 2024, 5.37 p.m. It's about 74. Nice. Maybe warmer. Just focused on this one right here for right now. I'm going to go back behind and Sit in the shade and talk to you. Get set. Yeah, it's about right. Camera's facing kind of northeast. Sun's going down. It's cool. It's kind of high still. All right, let's get settled and go through some lessons. Don't get bored. <clears throat> we'll, we'll move the camera accordingly. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. How's everybody doing? Time for the old fat beekeeper to give some lessons. I'm not going to do this all summer long. Not catch box stuff. I mean, I'll have catch boxes out, but don't get bored with the lessons. <sighs> what I want you to gain from this is reading the porch and the activity of the bees around it. Seems like we just don't teach much there, that topic, that subject. What are the bees doing? What are the bees doing? I hear that a lot. What are the bees doing? Oh well, bees be being bees, man. Now we're watching a double medium catch box, and there was a number of bees there a bit ago. They might be inside inspecting. Maybe taking some measurements, you know, getting a feel for the size of the house. I'm going to go back and tell their sisters. <clears throat> the first thing Scout Bee does, they want to assess the whole box on the outside. They'll float around it, top and bottom, back and forth, front and back, side. <sighs> Tired. Excuse me. Then they'll go inside, have a look around and then zip out, and boom, and head off to their house, talk to their sisters. See if they can rally up more attention. <clears throat> when we see more and more scouts, if you're in a position where you can check on your catch boxes daily from a distance, you know, I don't know, 30 yards, I'm probably 20 yards, 30, 25 yards away enough to not bother them. You'll see more scout bees, more scout bees, and more scout bees. They're getting ready to come. See the sisters race back to the house. Hey, 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 come look at this, man. Susie found a great spot. Jennifer said it's really good, man. So we need to get Brenda and Deborah over there too. Come on, everybody, let's go. And they get more and more and more. And then they reach a consensus. 
whether it's at the cluster or in the house. Sometimes they leave their own house and they go zoop straight to a new one. <coughs> Most times beekeepers see swarms hanging. Oh, look, a swarm. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, they're clustered together hanging. But you need to know more about swarming action and activity. Like in the air. What's it look like with a swarm in the air? Is it, oh, just a twist, a tornado going, <laughs> no, no, that's just one way, man. I've seen them, I've seen swarms move in straight lines like thousands of bullets. I mean, that's, that's wicked cool. You just, you, you just can't do nothing. It's just like, <laughs> all headed in a straight line. Or it could be a tight swirl. That's typically what everybody's used to seeing. Or it could be a low, wide, slow, floating circle, about three or four foot off the ground. I've seen that numerous times. Weird, weird. Came upon a swarm. Oh, there's a scout bee checking it out. <laughs> oh, kid. Little fat man's got to blow his nose again. Sorry. Been having some microphone issues. I think I got it settled. Anyway, come behind the colony at the apiary, and uh, there were thousands of bees floating stationary in the air. They looked huge. The depth perception when you're looking at bees is weird. Your eyes make it look bigger than it is. Like thousands of them. They're like, like June bugs floating in the air. I said, what is this? And they didn't see me initially. And they were all stationary. Like, what are they doing, man? So I walked up on them and they caught me. And then they all came together. They all came together and went back down inside the porch. Huh, I came up behind them, thousands in the air, stationary, not moving, floating, weird, very like somebody just stopped a time clock and the bees froze in a moment of time in the air, very weird. We go, what the heck? She's checking it out. They saw me, okay, off she goes. And then dove in the box. That was called a false swarm. They were waiting for their sisters to get the fat old woman off the porch. She doesn't want to come out in the daylight. Queens love the dark and they can hunker down and latch onto some wood or wax. And the girls have a hard time getting her unhooked, unlatched. And this may go on for two or three or four days they, they work hard at it, man. And if she's a good queen, a strong queen, she'll put up a fuss about it. And I am not going out there. <laughs> and they'll try it again the next day. Okay. I've seen a swarm come out in a frenzy, hit a limb, just six feet in front of them, all gather up in a cluster. Blaine and I, my son and I, sitting there talking about it, and they all unwound and went straight back in the box. They go, what the heck is that? <laughs> Again, a false swarm. It didn't get the queen. So they can smell her extremely well, and they can make decisions instantly. Man. So there's two... Oh, look, look... Somebody's checking it out. We're going to have a swarm in this box here in the week, next week. If it rain doesn't wash it all away. Okay, so what's this all about? My point. Here's my point. I can tell you stories. I can tell you lots of cool bee stories. Only because I've been doing it so long. I don't know, what, 19 years? I don't know. It started in 2005, so whatever it is, 19 almost. Okay, so my point is you gotta stick around. You gotta stay in beekeeping longer than two or three or four years. 
he, he, five. Five to eight is a golden window. Five to eight years is a golden window. But even that, even that, you got to stick around. You get past that 10 year mark, you got to stick around. The honey's cool, pollen's cool, cut comb honey's cool, cinnamon cream honey's awesome, all that's great. The bees, the tops. The bees just, gosh, addictive. I mean, the mystery of the bee, how they work, how they talk, how they decide, how, how they fly, how do they do this as a whole unit? Applying the principle of a lot doing a little. A lot of bees doing a little bit of work together can accomplish a great thing. Just, it's got to capture your heart. That's what I try to get students or members to, to that point of the bees capturing their heart. So you'll see me talk a lot about the bees not so much about secondary stuff, which we got to learn too, but the bees, because I, ha I have older beekeepers that have been around and been to bee clubs and stuff, and they come to our class, <laughs> and they get that puppy dog turned head look, you know? <laughs> and I just, I just, I have to laugh. I, I said, you've never heard this, have you? No, I've never heard this. I've been doing this 15 years. <laughs> I said, that's okay, man. That's all the time that happens. That's why traditional beekeeping, I don't know, my mind and my head, traditional beekeeping is a real liability. You got to break free of that. It's like hobbles on a horse or handcuffs on your wrist. <clears throat> you got to break free of that. What does it mean to be a sustainable beekeeper? You can define that in a lot of different ways. I rely upon the bees. I read the bees. I work in harmony with the bees. Right. A few scout bees. <laughs> yeah, well, watch. I'm going to turn this and move to this active nuke. And, and, and now here we go, we got scouts showing up again. All right, whatever. <laughs> oh, come on, Kendall. Yeah, we'll watch this one for a bit. Oh, we got, see I turn, I turn away now. Yep, I got scouts all over the other two we just turned away from. Okay, so I'm just gonna let you watch and we'll talk. <laughs> I want, I want, I'm not satisfied here. How do I do this? I want to get this. Uh oh. Okay. Hang tough with me. Settle down here. There we go. That's cool. We'll hang tough there for a bit. And I'll tell you about the other two. <laughs> this is great. So many, so many lessons, man. I. Oh man, I could give you just, I could spend months down here watching and doing and teaching lessons. Okay. 
I'm a little bit behind on setting up catch boxes. We've just been super busy, that's all. We'll get some more out, but, I, but I've, only, I've got three out here. Now, now watch. Three. One is already filled. Two are about to be. What's that tell you? Man, this could be a really banner beekeeping year here. I'm hearing reports of other beekeepers in Oklahoma going, woo we're putting up honey big time already. Good. Temperature's right. Moisture's right. Last June, Father's Day, we had major 100-mile-an-hour winds come blasting through. The, oh, that ended it. <clears throat> so very weather-dependent, this is true. Okay, so what are you looking at right now? The catch box, the nuke that we looked at yesterday. But the difference between this one that you're looking at and the one behind you is the one you're looking at has a completely dark backside. There's no opening or screen in the back end or bottom. Huh. Swarms like it dark. Swarms like it to smell right. Swarms like it clean. Oh, the characteristics of what they're looking for. So now we have behind you a nuke box that has the back bottom third is an open screen. But we've got scout bees on it. And then the double medium has a bottom board with a mite tray slid in to make it dark. <clears throat> They'll eventually take it. So if you're new to some of our films, welcome to Little Creek Bee Ranch. I'm just chilling in the South Apiary. This is what we call a catch box nursery. I've got I've got room to set out. Oh, I could set out hundreds of catch boxes. Just pack them in here. That's just a lot of extra work and stuff, and I don't I don't need that many. We'll just see how how we do. Okay, so what are we doing today? Here in the past few days, we've noticed the bees have turned on and now the swarms are moving. They're leaving my boxes and we've caught six so far. I have five. My daughter Melody came out to catch one. We filmed, hey, we filmed her catching that swarm using my gloves. And she, she, Melody doesn't like a jacket and veil. She's very claustrophobic sensitive and she can do it. If she, if she works slowly, she likes to sing and hum. And I'm telling you, that calmed the bees. And when you go watch that video, you'll see her in the icon. Melody's got her hands up with gloves on. And she's singing and humming in there. And there's bees all around her. All around her. She only got stung once on the finger and then she wanted my gloves because she was going to scoop them barehanded. But she got tagged just one time. But she was able to gently work those bees, didn't bother her, didn't get in her hair, didn't thump her. She knows these things. She's worked with me before, so she's not completely new. And she just calmed herself down and was singing and kind of humming. And woo, that was, I'm an old salty sourdough and that was impressive. That video has got massive hits. <laughs> I think we're over 3,200 hits, and that's just that's just for the past what a week or two. So it's pretty it's pretty exciting. She's teaching me how to get more views rolled in by putting hashtags on things and Facebook, etc. Which I'm weak there. I need to learn how to do more of that. <clears throat> and she wants some more deeper beekeeping lessons. That's cool, man. But the bees are cognizant. Don't treat the don't treat honeybees like some stupid inanimate creature that can't think. It's just the opposite. They're very cognizant of what you're doing. It's a question it's a question of are you gonna be polite or not? And then people blow this off and I'm just I get 
I, I can turn the coach on, I can turn it on pretty strong and I can, I can get on to some students and say, until you change your thinking, this is always going to be a struggle. You're working against the bees. And, th and this is what I talk a lot about. It's not, so, it's not so much a specific job you're doing. It's your mindset is against the bees. You're working against the bees. You're not respecting them and you're not treating them like they're really intelligent and smart. <clears throat> which they are, which they are. <laughs> I, get it, man. I, can't, I can't help but be a coach. I've been doing this for so long, man. So you're going to learn, you're going to learn the actions of the porch. And everybody, see, coming out, looking, watch your leaf. <laughs> the actions on the porch at, at the hive entrance I've mentioned this numerous times there's a little booklet on Amazon called at the hive entrance I think it's 10 or 12 dollars it's not terrible it's, it's an easy read but it's very definitive it gives you in column kind of column format the action on the porch and what it means inside and that is really a required little booklet to study and read. Even I need to go back and brush up on some stuff. So a lot of people get uh, impatient. And they may even dump out of this video with it. I want to see some bees. Open that, rip that top off and pull some bees out. <laughs> oh no, not yet. We'll get there. We're going to get there. My plan last summer was to work you through some colonies from the beginning, like baby set right here, this nuke, and then we're going to go to graduation day. We're going to move them over to the big box. And then we're going to come back and film adding another box on and building the honey and get into late summer, and now it's time to take some honey off. So you get from the very beginning, the front end, and follow me through the whole process. But it takes, what, five months? It's just going to take some time, man. <clears throat> just takes time oh here here's one i i used to i don't so much do it now i used to have lots of, of students come out this was years ago before the advisory program i would have six seven eight students at a time and we'd all get around a hive and and i'd open and do work oh oh the bees were so salty full of piss holy cow man what was, what's going on here Man, and and you and you just go, okay, this is not normal. And there'd be days where I'd work the same group, and they're all polite and quiet and kind and just sweet little girls. They go, okay, oh, right. they can count. They're they're acknowledging I do not like all these people looking in my house, man. And then later I'd bring some more students back out, five or six around the hive, open up, and boy, they're in my face, thumping my head. <laughs> so going, oh, this is this is interesting, man. They they don't like all these uh, viewers <laughs> peeking in my house, ripping off my roof, and looking inside. They're very private, very private bees. Operate by a set of principles. One of them is privacy. They love their privacy. One of the reasons I think this back part of the property makes such a good catch box area is we don't, there's nothing going on out here. There's cattle in the pasture behind me, but they're not up here close bothering anything. I don't have horses out here. I don't have goats or sheep or cattle. I like it that way. I used to run a bunch of bottle calves and bees when the kids were still at home, and oh, that was a stressful combination. And you had to put up cattle panels around the hives. Then you have to go in and, and weed eat the grass. And now the calves get out of the pasture and you had to chase them down. And it was such a pain in the butt. Those bees, those bees always come back home, man. <laughs> so there was a command decision made up, done with the cattle thing. We're going to move into a bigger beekeeping operation. That was years ago. And here we are. So you got to stick around a beekeeping long enough to be able to recognize these things. Okay, now I'm looking at the nuke you are, and I see bees coming out. Now you got to remember, not all these bees in there have been out yet. 
right at that, that I mowed, this is what this is, Wednesday, 6 p.m. And I mowed Sunday and there was nothing down here. So they've only been there a couple of days. Not all these bees have been out of the box to orient and to go off and forage. So when I see, you see them come out and they'll swing around left and right. They're, get, they're memorizing what their house looks like. They kind of younger bees, you see those bees just kind of float left and right close. Younger bees, they're not, they're not gonna go so far and big. They're gonna hang close to the porch. It's kind of like when you were small as a kid. Uh, I want to go that deep end of the pool, but uh, it's pretty scary. I'm going to kind of hang on to the side. <laughs> That's how I see this. These young bees are like, man, I'm not going out there yet. That big world out there is scary. I'm going to hang on the side of the pool right here. <laughs> oh, they're so cute, man. I oh, love them. Man, they're not pets, but boy, in my mind, they're my pet. I, I'm convinced that they will respond in like kind to you. If you're going to be rude and mean and rough with them, I guarantee you they'll spoon it back and ten times more to you. And then you go, "What's well, got some mean bees?" No, you. <laughs> These bees are just fine. Okay, now we got scout bees on the double medium coming out. Two or three of them coming out of the box. Man, there's going to be a swarm show up on this double medium before long here. She's looking around, up and down, all over. Yep, off she goes. Oh, good stuff. Oh, now we're looking at the nuke. Oh, I got scout action. I wished I could have two cameras. Let's see, maybe I can do this a certain way. You see, the, the one you're looking at now has ownership action on the porch. It's real concentrated on the face of the brute, on face of the box and on the porch. But the scout bees over here are kind of all over the side and the front and around. They're not focused. It's a broader, it's a broader inspection or a broader flight attitude. <laughs> sometimes as an old sourdough beekeeper you got to take the arrows and sometimes people go this guy's just a full bunch of crap <laughs> I, could, I could hear it man oh, you got to stick around man <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> well, wait till you learn acoustic beekeeping with apivox boy that that is separate the men from the boys real fast Apivox, Apivox does nothing but but improve your beekeeping skills, and it will show you what you do not know about bees. <laughs> That's cool, man. I like that a lot. Love it, but you got to be humble. Bees, the bees that keep you humble. Just learning the bees that'll keep you humble. <clears throat> yeah, cool. I was super busy today. I, otherwise, I've been down here about one i'm interested in filming between one and two that's what i want to do but i gotta cut out the time to do it it's evening time it's quiet posting up videos this is the third one to post they don't they don't post so fast you know but the lessons man Oh, man, I wish somebody would have taught me all this way back. People, here's another one. People just accept the fact, ah, they're just bees flying around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ever watch cattle? Now, 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 I'm not a cattle proficionado, but I know enough to know cattle communicate with their body. And if you watch a big old pasture of cattle, and there's some probably seasoned cattlemen out here listen to this and maybe i'm wrong maybe i got egg all on my face let's find out and there will be a herd mother in there in that cattle group and when they're all laying down somebody's got to decide where are we going to go eat grass next and they'll get up and they'll stand and face the direction they want to go and the younger junior cows will get up and look at her and go well all right and they'll stand and face the same way and you'll you'll get a portion of the herd stand up and face the direction they're getting ready to go 
And here in a bit, off they meander and everybody gets up and follows them. What? <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work your brain over. Okay, horse, cow, dog, cat, wow. deer, deer are good at this. How much communication do they do with body language alone? Ooh, careful, think about it. My dog talks to me, my little Aussie Shepherd, Missy, is smarter than a lot of people I know who will talk to me with her body. Curl walks me, does a play bow. She can get me to move, do, go, come without even barking or saying anything. Body language, body language. And that's what you're learning in bees. So don't be this person that's just going to discount. Ah, oh, they're just bees flying around. I just, I don't mean nothing. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, we're going to find out in five minutes just how much you know about bees because every time they move and do their stuff, they're communicating to their sisters, particularly inside the house. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> We'll get into some APVox work and we'll bring out the Bluetooth and we got to have some shade. I may have to set up the tent because you can't see the darn screen of the tablet when you're doing APVox work. And we're going to do a sound analysis of the colony and we're going to find out are they working on honey or, or wax? Are they working on uh, queen cells? Are they heating queen cells? What are they doing? <sighs> all through acoustics that that's another way they communicate is through vibrations vibrations oh man you gotta stick around stick around gotta stick around to get the good stuff man okay so 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 what is this april based upon the weather I need to hustle up and get another, I need to get 10 boxes down here. They can be any size, a nuke box, double medium, single deep, double deep, deep and a medium, deep and a medium is good. I like that for a catch box, deep and a medium. Yeah. Man, got I got quiet. that be going back and forth she could be laying down a scent mark I can do that too different view. <laughs> Let's do this. Hang tough with me. I'm going to Change my whole setup here. Yeah, we are. That's all right. Be worth it. <laughs> Bouncing you around, I know. Kendall's jacking with the camera. Sorry, I want a different view. Okay, let's do this. Gosh, 
Okay, Kevin. What are you doing, man? You're thinking right about now, this is so boring, this is worse than watching paint dry. What you're seeing right now, what you're seeing, that's normal. That's normal. This time of day, that's what you ought to see, normal. If you see a colony that has lots and lots of activity on it in a porch most of the day, that all looks cool. It's gonna burn you because they're gonna swarm. They're so packed up in there. Their population's so high that they've gotta come out and fly around a bit. They're, they, they don't like being cramped. So there's this balancing of quietness versus lots of action and and too many times newer beekeepers get mesmerized they go oh look we got lots of bees and, yeah, okay <clears throat> but for how long is that going on if it goes on for an hour or less and and then it quiets down okay i, I will take that that's that's about one o'clock time but if this kind of action is a lot most of the day, you better consider doing some inspections and, and, and maybe a thump test <clears throat> to determine if you need to split them. Okay, so what's a thump test? It's an acoustic test, it's a simple acoustic test. And if I take a knee and I use the fat palm of my hand and just bump the side of the brood block, not, not super hard, just bump it good thump, they will report to me. Sss, real high, fast pitched hiss. That's what I want to hear. That is an ownership hiss. <coughs> and here come the cattle. <coughs> That's an ownership hiss. That's a stability hiss. They're staying at home, they're not going anywhere. <coughs> oh, <excuse me. coughs> but if I hear a wave with decreasing pitches and a longer duration, they're in swarm mode. <laughs> and some of you that are new to the channel and learning, <coughs> you haven't got a feel for what we teach and do don't blow me off don't do it <laughs> trying to teach man trying to help people <clears throat> if you don't believe me go do it to your own colonies take a knee behind the hive you can do this with your naked ear and just bump the hive and listen to the report it should be very high fast hiss about a fifth of a second that's what you want to hear. Anything off of that is a potential swarm mode. You've got to confirm that. <coughs> I would direct you to our website, littlecreekbranch.com, to the acoustic page, and, and scroll down and look at the vignettes of panels of lessons that we put up there from our PowerPoint presentation, and you will find Eddie Wood's timeline. Eddie Wood's timeline is a swarming timeline. Swarms don't just pop up one day and go, oh, I think we're going to swarm. It usually takes him four to five weeks to rally up into a swarm mode and make all the preparations inside. And they do respond differently to the HIST report. This is old school beekeeping. This was common knowledge back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, way back there. But somehow, way, we've just dumped out on all the old skills, which were good skills. Now we're lost beekeepers. Well, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know. They're just bees. Take off the lid. <laughs> oh.
Holy cow. <clears throat> oh yeah, man. Curious, have I piqued your interest? He gone quiet again. That's normal. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> Scout. I got scouts on the nuke over here. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Don't want you getting bored. Don't be going to sleep. Read the porch. So this is an active group. Now let's go to a nuke that is a catch box. Oh yeah, there's bees in there. All right, let's see if I don't scare them all. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, liking that. <laughs> now you're looking at an empty box or thinking about coming to. Swarm coming to. The more attention I get here, they could, what they, what I could be seeing, I got two boxes on the same rail. And it could be the same group deciding, like, which one of these do we want to take? And I've seen that happen before. But the two boxes I watched were separated by 80 yards. It was insane, man. It was mid-March. It was cold. I had my coat on. A cloud had a cloud over over the I had to stay away 40 yards with binoculars it was intense cool I, just I probably should have just camped out there <laughs> just camp out wait for the swarm to come in Lessons, lessons, lessons. Here's a tip. You go to eBay if you, can, if you can find it. I've got the link. I've got the title link for it. Uh, look for a, a spy ear. It's a little kid's toy. A spy ear. It's about eight bucks. Sometimes twelve. It depends. They're very sensitive. Has a microphone set earbuds with it. It's just a kid's toy, but it is super good for using for listening to the colony. You could put, you can even hold it with your hand, put it underneath the bottom board, and give the hive a thump and listen to the hiss report. Before Apivox came out, July 2016, every summer, I don't know, for over 10 years or more. I was using nothing but the spy ear on a stick and had a aluminum flange at the end of the stick. I just slid it underneath the bottom board and extended cord earbuds and another stick with a washcloth and duct tape wrapped around it. Just a soft thump. I never had to take a knee. Oh gosh, I was testing 35 or 40 colonies at a time. I could do all those tests in whew, 40 minutes. I'd know where everybody stood. If I had problem children, I'd just take a brick and move it to the side of the corner of the lid. Come back later. Learning how to do thump tests is a big deal. <sighs> Low tech, but sound principle. Do thump test with ABVox, now that's powerful. 
you can go to some of our old Facebook videos on, uh, let's see, there are two Facebook sites, the Ken Davis Facebook site, or the other one's Little Creek Bee Ranch, either one. And go to our video section and pull up the videos there. We have students in the field, and we're doing uh, AP Vox work with a thump test, and they're inspecting uh, queen cups on the frames. And they come back over to the camera and tell me where on the timeline they think the colony is on Eddie Wood's timeline. It's not a fast thing. It's, it'll take about an hour, hour and a half, but boy, is it good. <clears throat> you know exactly where the colony stands. When you walk away, you're done. You know exactly where the colony stands. Now, it may change in the coming weeks, but if you did that once a month, twice a month, <clears throat> you would know. No guessing. We had, uh, let's see, this was July, July 2016, Vox came out, OSU heard of some of our work, and they brought uh, entomology students out October of 2016. And we did a class for them, and we talked APVOX. The kids were so pumped about technology. It was so boring to them talking about a box and frames, et cetera. They wanted the tech. And so when I pulled out APVOX, they just, their eyes lit up. They, what is that? We can do that. Whatever it is, we can do it. <laughs> it's on a device. We can do it. So when I brought them out here to show them around, they, one young girl, it was so cool. She said, Mr. Davis... How did you ever do bees without Apivox? How did you do this before? <laughs> I said, we just guessed. <laughs> There's no high-tech answer. No, we just guessed. We were, that's all we knew how to do. Look at them and go, well, I think they're okay. <laughs> nope, not now. I uh, uh, love it. Okay. Boy, you know. Anyway, all right, so I'm down here. I just wanted to come back down and check these other two catch boxes, see how we're doing. Yeah. Give you some lessons. We've been working hard. I'm a tired puppy. <clears throat> Time to do some more box work. All right, man. What do you think? Um, here's a here's a encouraging tip. If ever you're watching us, you know videos and stuff like that. If you're serious, particularly if you're one of our members in the program, you might as well just mentally buy in if you haven't already. Get your notebook out before you ever click on one of our videos. You can always back it up. But I'm going to throw out so many gold nuggets that you, you, you will watch them. You will watch them two, three, four times. You go, man, I never heard that. <laughs> I know. I know. That's how that works. We have some, some people will drive all the way back out here a second and third time to take a face-to-face -face class. And they'll, they'll say to me, did you change the, the course material? I said, no. It's the same one you saw a couple years ago. They go, man, I, I don't remember hearing that. <laughs> I know, that's how we learn, rep repetition over and over and over and over. So don't get bored with me doing the same topics over and over for a period of time. Then I'll shift. I'll, I'll throw you a curveball. We'll, we'll get into some bees. But I don't, I don't, I don't remember you talking about that. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm telling you, man. We're going to have a swarm show up here. Uh, we're expected to have storms here. What is this? Wednesday. Tonight for the next several days. Okay, now that, that, that will slow things down. But, provided it's not like. 100 mile an hour wind stuff. After a storm front comes through, oh, baby, and the nectar surges again, after a storm front comes through, that's when we want to refresh catch boxes with Swarm Commander. And it's just like erasing the chalkboard and starting all over again. 
<clears throat> it's a good it's a good time to get on top of some catch boxes right after a big storm front comes through. <clears throat> Yep. Oh man, I could keep going. Gotta go eat dinner. Kendall, what did you get done today? Um, I counted bees. <laughs> They're all present and accounted for. <laughs> Plus a lot of other stuff I got done. I'm gonna come down here for some peace and relief. Just give you a lesson, man. Something tips and tips and tips and repeat tips and repeat them again <clears throat> I'm so I'm just as anxious as you to open up this nuke box that we were just at look at that man that's a scout bee going in there go get your sisters it's okay sweetheart this is a good place to be Nice. Nice. Do this. Into the sun. I don't want to be in the sun. Move this way. Oh, now I got the shadows. Well, that's no good. Well, that's a bummer. <sighs> shadows. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Got more coming. All right. Leave them alone. I'm out of here. Hope you're having fun, man. Check us out. LittleCreekBeeRanch.com. Personal advisor program. Number one, that's a number one service they like, people love. Later.